hello there. Here's something fun I did during the PTR. We can actually solo Gar and MC, and I think it's pretty simple. To start off, I used two P's tier 5 for this. I think it would be possible to do this run without, but the two P's saves a lot of time because we're able to try and tank every trash except Fire Lords. We can tank Core Hounds. A Screech Pet is also kinda mandatory as it holds aggro the best, which allows it to do more damage to heal the pet. I use a Carrion Bird here, but any pet with Screech should be fine. My spec is shown on screen, it's mostly normal BM, but it takes cat-like reflexes, pet armor, and pet health, as we are never in Hawk and we need a tankier pet for this. Oh, I forgot to mention, you really should have a Parachute Cape or any other type of slow fall. Parachute Cape is just the most reliable. Noggin Fogger would be RNG, but possible. Car could also dispel it. Before we start this mission, there is something we have to do. Uh, we have to fish for a certain combination of mobs. Thankfully it's only two mobs and it's a 50-50, but it, we have to get double lava annihilator. We really want to avoid having to try and kill fire lords, thankfully. Molten core is considered a raid instance and we can reset it as much as we want without hitting any type of lockout. So we just have to send in pet. If it's two lava annihilators then we can go ahead. If it's if there's a fire lord we have to reset with an alt or die and reset or whatever way you're gonna do it. Alright, so as our pet are able to tank most anything, I'll just quickly show our core hound on a lava surger. Uh, I highly recommend bringing restorati restoration potions, restorative potions. We only really have to kill one core hound, but if it's the ancient dread, which is the attack speed slow debuff, then we kind of have to cleanse that one, otherwise we're in trouble. The other core hound combinations doesn't really pose that much of a threat. Worst case, you can still go back and endlessly kite them. Another important part is Lava Surgery has have a 25 to 30 minute respawn window. That is important because we want to kill the Surgers right before we pull Gar to give us the most time before they would respawn. If you're solo, you're gonna get one Surger respawned in the fight. That is not an issue, but that's it should just be stated. Time for the Molten Giant pack. Uh, your pet can handle the Molten Giant pretty well. The Destroyer hurts real bad and can be a problem. But we get to practice the juggling we will need later on for Gar anyway, so it's nothing too dangerous. You end up kiting one, mostly the, the Destroyer, and you tank and kill the Giant. Remember to use Misdirect and Scorpid Sting. Once the Giant is dead, you can tank the uh, Destroyer. In this clip, I will use. Steam Tonk controller to despawn my pet when I realize that I will not out heal the damage. And then I'll just respawn the pet, let it heal up if it doesn't automatically heal, and then jump over and then faint so that the giant is gonna path around, buying me extra time. This is a tactic that gets in handy. Steam Tonk is really good. Yeah, just get one.
Alright, same thing here as the Molten Giant pack. We just send up P Pet with Eye of the Beast, go around the corner, pull the two Annihilators, and then we go to the infinite kiting area here. Um, Annihilators are kind of annoying as they constantly drop threat, so you don't really get to do that much damage to them. You can't pet tank them. They just take a while, you just ping pong them, you try to keep them together, and they'll fall over pretty quickly. Now that we're getting into the fun stuff, I'll have to show this. So initially, we I did this as a duo, just to see if we could do it. Uh, we did it twice as a duo, kill Gar that is, and then after that I tried to kill Gar on the third week solo. But here's a clip of our first kill. So now that we're getting to pulling the bells, I'll just walk through how, what I do. If this Korand has respawned or you opted to not kill it, you just have to wait for it to start walking away before you send in your pet. I had one Korand at Gar respawn, which makes me have to wait a little bit on the pull. It's not a big deal. Um, Gar has the ability to teleport you if he doesn't find a pathing, just like Guard Slipkick does in Dire Mall and several other bosses or certain types of mobs. It's not really that much of an issue. This is why we're standing somewhere between Gar and the kill spot. So we're gonna send in the pet here. Uh, as soon as I get aggro, I'm just gonna have dive on, or I can cast dive after I get aggro. I'm gonna lead him between the mobs towards Baron Gedon's lair. This is so that he's gonna be hug the wall and not chain any other mobs. This is where uh, slow fall gets really important. It might be possible without any slow fall, but you're gonna have to start. Uh, pumping noggin foggers or something here so we're just gonna run towards the cliff that we jump over to cross the gap as i said before he teleports you if he finds any if he doesn't find you so if you just fall into lava during the fight or anything like that he will teleport you and you will just die so the important part here is that we have enough distance so that i can summon my pet feign so that the mobs all target my pet or at least guard doesn't target me and then as you saw here i drank a combat elixir because i'm in combat still I drank a elixir of major agility. This is PTR, so I have an unlimited, but you can craft even the smallest like lion strengths. But drinking a combat elixir gives a tiny amount of threat. Guardian doesn't seem to do it. Uh, and this is so I could redirect the uh, ads without killing my pet. Technically, I could have used Steam Tonk there to despawn my pet and do it all again, all over, with uh, Eye of the Beast. But this is why you will need mana pots or and a shit. Well, mana pot can help you. Uh, volley also helps you in redirecting the ads. And then you need to do a lot of uh, battle elixirs. And that is to control the ads when juggling them. I will be doing it in the clip somewhere. It's just the easiest way I found. Here I'll show volley. I think I'm doing mana pot on the next. And then I'll use elixirs. But elixir basically 
uh, redirects all the mobs too. And this is also why we misdirect Gar and make a little threat on the pet later. We misdirect Gar to the pet so that we can drink an elixir to turn all the ads around but not Gar himself. Oh, and uh, one last thing that's important about Gar. About six minutes after he has engaged combat, he is gonna start sacrificing his uh, small dudes. So we don't have to worry about killing them after a while. We literally just have to shoot Gar and yeah, I've, I'm not sure what I did there. I did some pot and they were just gonna turn around and we just do this for like eight, nine minutes and then there's no more ads and then it's just Gar. Somewhere around the 30 minute mark of the fight here, I'm gonna get a Surger to spawn. I'm just gonna kite Gar like I'm doing now while I tank Surger. I'll, I'll uh, highlight that when it when it gets to that, but other than that, it's just kiting him. And when he starts exploding ads, it's very important that you are not close to ads. They have an enormous explosion range, and you don't want to take aggro, fly away, fly over some unpathable, and then guard teleports you and kills you. Okay, so just as I mentioned earlier, 
close to the 30 minute mark, we're gonna have the Surger respawn. Thankfully we only have to deal with one Surger, because there's only one that paths into the path where Gar is to chain aggro. Um, unfortunately he chained to me here instead of my pet, because I was uh, out of feign death. It's not that big of a deal, we're just gonna misdirect him to our pet. It takes a little bit longer, but we just produce aggro on him like this. Make sure the pet doesn't despawn, because then Gar would turn around. And then we keep juggling Gar by doing damage mainly to Gar as well if we can. Like whenever Gar is here we always prioritize Gar because we need to do damage to him. Dealing damage to Gar is still going to heal our pet. What we do want to avoid is excessive use of mend pet now. And there comes a part later on when we're kiting here. Uh, since the surgery doesn't really do that much damage to your pet. You don't really have to rely on mend pet that much. I'm just waiting extra long here to make Gar have a longer path. So I can pop CDs and stuff. What is important is. Once you have Fain Death Gar. And he is walking back towards your pet. You cannot cast Mend Pet. Because you might risk over aggroing. Depending on how much aggro Gar has. on your, uh, your pet has on Gar. But as you can see here. Pet happily tanks it. It's not really an issue. I just Fain him. He goes back. We just nuke the Surger. And just like I said. We're just gonna focus down the Surger. Whenever Garth comes into range, we're gonna focus Guard to turn him. We have to still produce the aggro right. And then we go back to the Surger, and once the Surger is bad, dead, we just go back to normal. Just kiting Gar forever. You have a lot of break time here, so... This is probably one of the easiest solos I've done. we we'll just... Yeah, enjoy doing it. Not sure if it's worth doing, you know? It's just kind of fun. Here we get to the end part.